Welcome to the Half Yard Line. I'm Tim. I'm Luke. And Luke, welcome to another episode of the Half Yard Line. We have finished, finally finished. It took us some time. Apologize for the odd release schedule of the State of the Union's position by position. Life Summer, happened a little bit. Man. Summertime. summertime. Yes. We were out, uh, you know, playing playing ball in the park until yes. mom called us in for dinner and then That's right. No, we weren't doing that because unfortunately no. we're not. 13 anymore but those were good times those were good times i remember that was like the remember when high school was hard and you're like gosh this is the worst can't wait to start working oh i used to complain all the time my dad would be like oh my mom would be like oh hard day blah 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 and i'd be like yeah you're getting paid for that though you don't have you know, homework that was, always the, that was my fallback you don't have homework mm-hmm. and you're being paid yeah. so now that i am those things i am that person that they were i find the other side of the argument much more convincing <laughs> yeah i would like to go back and take the homework yeah. and the not being paid if someone else and, is putting food on the plate and paying the mortgage yeah and and to be honest tim it's appropriate that we bring up uh you know shattered dreams on ah. recording this the day after cut day in the NFL. oh yes oh, so yes. there's not a name for that but they should be because obviously the, in the you know they it's not called the, cut down day but they, they used to be the gradual cut downs right but now yeah. it's, they go from nine. All the NFL teams go from ninety to fifty-three in one big old swing of the axe. So Another change they you know, blamed on COVID. Right, there's Black Monday, right, for the coaches when the season. But there needs to be a name for the cut down day, but something that's a little bit gentler because this is ultimately pretty rough on the guys who who get let go. A lot of them get signed back to practice squads, but you know that's yeah. the end of the road for some. So. Well, I think a lot of people forget ninety to fifty-three is it's it's not like six guys. It's like forty yeah. percent of the team. Bye. Yeah, um, and even if you factor in adding on the practice squad players back into that, you know, they're not guaranteed the same benefits. They're not, gar- you know, they don't accrue a season towards free agency. They don't get the pension and all the rest of it. The NFL, three years, I think, is the average career length now, or maybe right. even less. It's been going down steadily. So, not for long for a reason. So, yeah, we record this the day after cut day. And uh, it's a tough, it's a tough day for many. But we are going to talk about franchises, Tim, that have had injured many a tough day. Indeed. This podcast focusing on the downtrodden franchise index, and we'll explain what that is and what we're going to talk about today in just a sec. But before we do, encourage you all fine folk out there in listener land to find us on your podcast app of choice. Hit the subscribe button, leave us a rating and a review. Find us on your social media venue of choice as well at Half Yard Line Pod, wherever you do your social media. There's a couple of new venues you'll be able to find the half yard line pod as well so we'll soft launch with that statement uh, and if you f- don't find us on your social media app that you use then send us an email at halfyardlinepod at gmail.com or on the social media app you find us on and we will uh, hurriedly sign up for it and try and understand what children do these days because frankly we don't have any idea whatsoever no. but tim one thing we do understand crappy so football well, it's <laughs> terrible football teams for those of us who weren't, for those of you, sorry, who weren't with us during the regular season of 2022. We Where launched, were you exactly? Well, well, we launched the Downtrodden Franchise Index, the DFI, as we will refer to Patented, it the Half Yard Line DFI, patented, yeah. TM. The, the Downtrodden Franchise Index is a list of the franchises that just cannot catch a break. They're the teams that year after year, there's false dawns, there's a new quarterback, there's a new coach, there's a new somebody who's going to save the day, a new owner. And for some reason, they are stuck in the endless vortex of sucking, which a lot of NFL teams suffer from. There is an escape route or escape routes available for the yeah, downtrodden franchise. People have the left. NFL. People have left. It's not a one-way street. And Tim and I are going to go through today who the downtrodden franchises are for 2023 and establish the official list of downtrodden franchises for the DFI for 2023, which we will track throughout the regular season. We'll just say up front that one half of this podcast, the voice you're hearing right now, has slightly more hands-on experience with being a fan of a sucky team as a Titans fan who's sat through 15-odd years of disaster and catastrophe and shame. Tim is a Steelers fan, so slightly mm. less hands-on experience. However, is a uh, is an avid follower and empath when it comes to shitty teams, apart from the Browns. Uh, That's right. No sympathy. No empathy for the Browns. They're yeah, on the, I, the list. <laughs> I sit, yeah, Spoiler. I, yeah. I sit here in front of my Vince Young jersey, which I felt was the most representative downtrodden jersey that I own. The AJ Brown jersey is pretty good because I bought it 
two months before we traded him. We traded him, yeah. But, you know, Vince Young, a represent, representation, a, a totem of the hope that never comes home to roost. So I Tim, find myself, however, Luke, yeah. sitting in front of uh, Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Green, and Troy Polamalu uh, signed footballs, uh, two Hall of Famers, and a soon-to-be. So very similar uh, success yeah. our two franchises have had. Sim- yeah. Between the two of them, seven Super Bowls, right? So like, uh, yeah. you know. No, uh, for sure. It's like me, between me and Tom Brady, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tim, although Six you don't know too much about it, like I say, I think you're a, you're a solid you're a solid empath. You have to sit through my in-season misery. Even if the Titans are good, I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop. So when we talk about downtrodden and franchise indexes, when we talk about, or indices, I should say, when we talk about downtrodden and franchise admissions, what do you look for? What are your key factors in determining who is a downtrodden franchise in the NFL? This is going to blow your mind. This is a little bit sort of next level. So bear with me here. But losing lots of football games <laughs> is, is that an analytic? key. Is that analytics? I'm hearing yes. a lot about analytics these days. There's a lot. That one <laughs> That's one of them. Yeah. Losing Wins. a lot of football games. If you don't win the football, you generally find yourself on this list over time. Losing is not enough. There are teams who lose a lot of games, who also win a lot of games, who are you know, on again, off again, in again, out again, through the machines, they raced around about again. Those are not necessarily your downtrodden franchisees. Okay, Your downtrodden franchise, we have another list that we talk about, and that is uh, people who, who suffer from battered fan syndrome, right? This is <laughs> yeah. similar. Like, the fans of these teams want so badly to root for their team, but have almost given up on it. it you watch the games in hopes that maybe this one won't be terrible. Uh, you know, you, you talk about the opposite side of the spectrum. You got the the Patriots who for 20 years, their fans were mad if they hadn't put the game away by the end of the second quarter. Like, of, of course, we're going to win all of our games. And if we don't, like you've ruined my week. The downtrodden yeah. franchise index fan is happy when you lose by less than 20 points, right? You were in the game. There was a reason to watch the fourth quarter. Maybe you get a win. I would also say it, it tends to help if you have a completely dysfunctional organization, um, owners who are loathed throughout the NFL, uh, GMs who you can't figure out how they got their first job in football, let alone promoted, uh, players who can't stop getting arrested. You know, good stuff. You think about what's going on in Indianapolis right now with Jonathan Taylor. That is the mark of a downtrodden franchise. You have one good player yeah. on your football team, and you can't get him into camp. Like, Ill-advised it, owner interventions, yeah, terrible contract negotiations, all that. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah, battered fan syndrome is certainly something that I suffer from. And anyone out there who's a fan of a bad team will know this. It it just takes a long time to get over. You know, you're you're hoping against hope that things will go better, but even when they do go better. That's no guarantee that the, the the residual battered fan syndrome will, will ebb away. But yeah, I agree with you, Tim, in terms of what we look for from a downtrodden franchise. Being crap on the football field is, you know, that's criteria one, right? If you're winning yes. 10 games a year, it doesn't matter Not if on you're the list. crazy. It doesn't matter if you if your GM is terrible. Like it's, no, it's, it's not happening. Sustained terribleness certainly plays a big part. If you, if you go two, three years seven and nine, six and 10, even, you know, sorry, I'm using old, old maths, old football maths, <laughs> set seven and 10 or whatever. Anyway, you get the idea. Six and 11 games, yeah. five games. Oh. Yeah. But then you win 10 games, then you win eight games. You know, it's, you, you, you're uninteresting, but you're not downtrodden. And you definitely get bonus points for being funny. There's no doubt about that. And on that note, Tim, you, you hinted at it already, but maybe as an intro to the, the, unoriented or unorientated listener to this podcast about really what what is a downtrodden franchise can you give me an example i think you and i both agree that there are two outstanding charter members first ballot hall of fame downtrodden franchises one in each conference yep one of them you've already mentioned yep cleveland browns yeah and so- the other is the the Det- i'll just say the other one is the detroit lions so the nfc and afc north or AFC and NFC Central, if you're old enough, well represented. Those two really stand out amongst the field by a long way for being the most downtrodden franchises in the entire league. Up for debate, who is the top of the power rankings? I think that's a good debate to have. Not good because they, they suck, but they're definitely both up there. And I think they're the outstanding one. So to, to you, Tim, you're an AFC North guy. Let me talk Cleveland, baby. 
Go the Cleveland it. Browns were so bad, they they lost their team, right? That you were so awful, <laughs> your owner was like, <laughs> "Bye." We don't. We're not going to have the Cleveland Browns anymore. We're going, and it's not like they moved. Listen, you lose your team to L.A. You lose your team to Vegas. You can chalk that one up to like right. Big mm, maybe. Yeah, that's tough for me. I would like to live there too, but I'm stuck in Minnesota. No, they left. They went to the uh, the shining city on a hill that is Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, so uh, you know it's not it's not so good. And then they came back, and since they've come back in 1999. I did a little ranking of worst football teams ever. Oh, yeah. The, since they've come back, Cleveland has five, in my view, five of the top 15 worst teams in the history of NFL football <laughs> over the last 24 the, years. You know, the Toledo Maroons or whoever, <laughs> the Rochester yeah. Bulldogs and all that in the old days. So they went 0-16, right? When yeah. they went 0-16, you go, that's got to be the bottom of the barrel. No, 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 no. They were outscored in that year by 167 points. Okay, so that's roughly 10 points a game. 10 points that's a week, yeah. Awful. Yeah, that is bad. only their four, fourth worst performance since they came back in 99. <laughs> so we're bad. talking I, we're I should say, <laughs> I should say for the benefit of any Cleveland Fra- Browns fans listening, all of these downtrodden franchises to a greater or lesser degree, we have sympathy for you, right? We understand yes, it's pain. Not the Browns. We're laughing, but we yeah, for different reasons, but we you know at some point, we hope that the down, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth type situation yes. in the NFL. The Patriots will suck. The Steelers, the Packers, they'll all suck. And suddenly mm. it'll be the Browns and the Lions riding high in the NFL. So we laugh, we sympathize, but we're, we're on we're on your team to a more or less extent. Listen, you'll but, get more coverage on this show than you will on anybody else's. Oh, so come on. I'm sick of hearing about the Chiefs. I'm sick of hearing about the Bengals. I'm sick of hearing about, you know, the Tom, Dick and Harry of NFL quarterbacks. Give me... Two shitty teams playing shitty football in week 14. Both the seasons are over. That's Nobody right. gives a shit. The seed, the stadium's empty. Downtrodden bowls, as we refer to them, when the two, two downtrodden franchises meet. Cleveland certainly has had many of those over the last several years. Yeah, no doubt. There is only one team in football whose head coach can say, listen, I can guarantee you next year we won't go 1-15 in 15 and follow it up by going 0-16. Oh, he, he was right. I mean, he was. He was indeed. He was correct. What an absolute banner franchise for a, a, a an institution that is the downtrodden franchise index. Um, yeah. No, I was just going to say, the, the other interesting thing about the Browns is they were good. Like, when the NFL dawned, they indeed. were the best team. They had Jim Brown, the Otto Graham years, when it was a lot of NFL championships, as not the Super Bowl back then, but they won everything, right? Paul Brown found uh, was founded founder of the team, Hall of Fame coach, arguably the greatest player in the history of the league. You know, you're talking about a team that won all the time and then just stopped and has never started again. Well, and and to your point, I'm gonna I'm gonna read you the record of a team that would have been firmly supplanted in the downtrodden franchise index, and I'm gonna try to get you to guess who this is. Uh, it's not recent, so just bear with me here, but. In the five consecutive seasons, a team went five and nine, two and twelve, five and eight, four nine and one, two eleven. Sorry, there was another tie in there. It was five eight yeah. and one, four nine and one, two eleven and one, one <clears throat> thirteen and zero. Uh, and um, and then five five is. and nine. So that was the the precursor to uh, a team coming out of the downtrodden franchise index. So that's a pretty terrible record. Any idea who it was? Is it the Buccaneers? It is not. That is the 1965 to 1970 Saints? Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Wow. And then starting in 1972, the Steelers then go 11 and super, 3. Super, 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 super. 11 and 3, 10 and 4, 10 3 and 1 won the Super Bowl, 12 2 and 0 won the Super Bowl, 10 and 4, 9 and 5, 14 and 2 yeah. won the okay. Super Bowl, yeah, no, no. 12 and it's 4 won about, the Super it's Bowl. Not about you. We can keep it's going. Not, the point yeah. is, you can get out. The Steelers would have been out. a fixture in the DFI pre 1970. If the, since if the podcast then, existed in 1960s and we were doing one, they'd have, have been, been there, man. Out. They would have been on the list. So it, there is hope yeah. for you yet. Tim, can I can I give you a bit more recent Browns history? Because I also did some research into the Browns. Oh, um, I love the Browns. 2015, 2016 just, Browns were real bad. Yeah, just in terms of the sheer futility 
of the franchise over the last 30 something years. The last division title, do you know what year they won the division? The last time they won the division, do you know what year that was? Oh, God. 2002. No, they were terrible. Oh, no, no, no. It's 1989. They didn't win it <laughs> once since they've come back? Holy shenanigans. No. They won, they won uh, it in 1989. Wow. That's the year I was born. So in my lifetime, they've won one. And that was when yeah. I was zero. It's pretty um, terrible. Since, since that point, as you mentioned, they've had the team left, taken away from fans that love the team. Browns have extremely passionate fans. Everyone knows this. Dog the pound. Then come, and then they've come back. They've also had and then fight, well, hired and fired the greatest coach in the history of football, arguably Bill Belichick, who was the coach for them before they left. Um, since the last division title, Tim, they have had mm. 11 different coaches in that span, which is actually yeah. fewer than I thought. That includes, uh, they're all the full-timers. There were two interims. Now, we'll make this quick for the interest of time. How many of these do you think you can name? That's my trivia question for you. Since 1989, how many Browns Cle coaches can you name? Cleveland are, Browns coaches that I can I name. Give, oh, there's, one, oh, there's only 11? Couple, I'll give you a couple of clues. Number one, well, one is Belichick, right? Who I already mentioned. Right. There, since about 2000, the, the pace has quickened significantly in terms of turnover. So in the 90s, they only had three. And then since then, it's gone pretty berserk. So most of them are, almost all of them are this century. Belichick is the first one. Okay. So Belichick. Uh, uh, all right. So there after are two that. Interims as well. So I'll give you credit if you get an interim coach as well. That's also fine. I'd be surprised <laughs> if you do. After Belichick would have been Chris Palmer. Chris Palmer. Well done. After Palmer, Butch Went on to coach Davis? In college, Butch Davis. Yep. Uh, there was an interim between Davis and Romeo Cannell, but I don't know who it was. Very well. This is excellent, by the way. The interim. I, listen, I've played a lot. I've watched a lot of Cleveland the, Browns yeah, football. The, the interim coach was Terry Rubisky. Rubisky. Whose son, uh, whose son later came into the NFL as a wide receiver and was drafted by the Browns, I believe, in the third round, but never yep. did anything because obviously it's the Browns. Post uh, so Romeo, yeah, Cornell Romeo Cornell would yep. have been the Eric Manginius. Mangini. The, the Manginius. 100% record so far. I'm really impressed. Uh, oh, God. Next, there was a terrible old guy. Uh, Pat Shermer, maybe. <laughs> it's Pat Shermer. You're doing these in chronological order, which should be... Well, I'm backwards. going backwards. I'm just trying no, to remember. Please. No, you're, you're, you're right there. You, By the way, you've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, six to get. I'm, I'm not going to get the rest of these. So, Because we're going to run into some really short tenures that I won't even think of. Yeah. Um, so we're into like the early 2010s. So uh, Pat Shermer. Is it is it Petten? Mike Petten is you missed one out, but oh, Mike Petten. Oh, 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 Rob Chitinsky. Rob Rob Chitinsky, yeah. Uh and then ben. I mean the best the best tenure in football coaching history, Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson. There was an interim, interim oh god, the New Orleans Saints you know who, guy. You know uh, the name. Uh, yeah. um Bounty Gate, uh, Greg Williams. Greg Williams. Two and more. then, of course, the illustrious Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens. And Stefanski. Boom. Nailed it. I'm honest. Nailed it. Stunned and extremely impressed that you not only named all 13 <laughs> of those, but you got them in chronological order. Well, I, Chitinsky, I, I needed a bonus. No, but when you didn't remember, you went back and filled the gap in, which I found very commendable. So, yeah, just a couple more things before we move on from the Browns, because, I mean, we, we've crapped for the Browns a lot. They've obviously oh, we can keep going. <laughs> They've obviously had a lot of misfortune and yes. the losing record is speaks for itself. Since they moved back to Cleveland, they've played 257 mm -hmm. games. Do you know how many of those games they've won? I mean, you don't, but give me a guess. No, I have 207, you said? They've played 257 games. 257, I would have guessed they've Cleveland. certainly not more than, than, than 60. <laughs> no, you, that's a bit too much. So they're 87 and 170. 87? They came black, yeah. That's more than I would have guessed. That's almost thirty well, percent. Well, they've only had two winning seasons since two thousand and three. They have one of those. And one can of I tell you my? Ten, one of no, them they went ten and six, and obviously they didn't make the playoffs because you're a downtrodden franchise. You went ten and six. That was the Derek Anderson year. Well, and, and we've talked about it a little bit, right? It's not losing is not enough. It's, uh, you know, you got to do random shit like. Uh, last year you gotta you gotta lose a game in the biggest comeback in, in the history of football, right? You've gotta have a butt fumble. You gotta have like and and one of the things that sticks out, this is the last thing we'll say on Cleveland, Kevin Stefanski's first year, the Cleveland Browns were something of a, a resurrected team, right? You know, Baker Mayfield looked like he might be a good football player. They went eleven and five that year. And even the year they went eleven and five, they placed third out of four teams in their division. 
Like you, even when you get a break, you don't get a break. And that's part of being a downtrodden franchise is when you think, all right, we finally got the guy. You hire Bill Belichick and then you fire him. You, yeah. you know, you get a break, you get lucky or, or you think you're going to get lucky and then you don't. Yeah, they just haven't been able to find any sort of sustained success. Stefanski looked like it was going to take off. Obviously, won a playoff game against your Steelers. That was the first playoff win in forever. But then the team immediately kind of crumbled, fell apart, got rid of Mayfield. Stefanski's on the hot seat. And then, just to cap that off, they gave Deshaun Watson a $250 million fully guaranteed contract, therefore ensconcing themselves almost certainly in the DFI for years and years to come. So when we talk about what constitutes the downtrend franchise index if we're talking about it during the season go back and listen to the last 10 minutes where we just talked about the browns it's it's sustained pain inflicted on your fan base and we'll talk briefly on the lions but then we'll move on um as the other kind of member of this fraternity this is elite pairing elite um yeah elite bad mm. um interesting you know, use of the term yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the only other team in the NFL which hasn't won a division title since realignment happened. Um, oh. So pretty rough. They won the NFC Central. That was in 1993 was the last division title for the Detroit Lions. Their last playoff win was in 1991. So it was two years before. So Barry Sanders was like in his second year in the NFL. Um, so they've lost nine playoff games in a row, which is an NFL record um, since that time. Interesting nugget on their last playoff win in 1991. It was against Jerry, Jimmy Johnson's Dallas Cowboys. So, hey, they were good. A bit of, although Troy Aikman wasn't playing because he was injured. <laughs> but we'll gloss over that. Um, they haven't had a playoff appearance since 2016. In their last playoff appearance, they lost 26-6. So you can score a touchdown that game. Um, they had a bit of, you know, green shoots. We talk about, you know, it's the hope that kills you with the downtrodden on franchises. Right? Remember they had Jim Caldwell in Detroit. And it looked like the team was going pretty well. The fans seemed to like him. The players seemed to like him. They weren't spectacular, but they were pretty good. And that was a, certainly a change in pace. Two of the three years he was there, they had a winning record. Then they fired him to much uproar across the NFL community. And then they finished last in the division four years in a row. So let that what, be a went lesson. Went well then. It let that well. be a lesson. Going nine and seven, if you're a downtrodden on a franchise, take nine and seven. Take as many nine and sevens as you can get because it takes time to get out of being dreadful. I mean, you talked about the Steelers. We talked about the Patriots really for a lot of their history did pretty much nothing and then just managed to put together the right staff, the right players and so on. You managed to drag yourselves out. The only other thing I want to mention on the Lions, Tim, which is a downtrodden stat, which I really liked. Okay. Um, everyone knows that there was the Bobby Lane curse, right? For those who don't know, Bobby Lane was a quarterback for the Lions back in the 1950s. Hard partying, hard charging. used to go out and play saxophone in bars till 5 a.m. then turn up and play football. What a character. <laughs> Beloved. They got rid of him, and he said, the Lions will never win again. I think as long as I'm alive, I think is what he said. He's been dead for quite a long time. They still have not Hasn't helped. Yeah, he died. unfortunately. So the Bobby Lane curse is real. But in that time period, they had probably my favorite score line I've ever seen. Oh, they lost a playoff game in 1970 to the Dallas Cowboys uh -huh. at, the co at the Cotton Bowl. So in in Texas, right where okay. it's warm. Indeed, the score was five zero. They lost a playoff game five zero. Well, you know this was the era of the def defensive juggernaut. <laughs> I, the, the, to who? A touchdown to, to yeah, they lost five zero to Dallas. In to Texas. Dallas? So in it wasn't Texas. like because I saw this stat and I thought, oh, cold weather game, you know, playoffs in the old you know, the ice bowl was like six three or whatever. You know, it was, low scoring was much more common in the old days, but five five zero, yeah. All right. Allowed a touch allowed Who a, had the safety? A, I don't uh I don't know actually. The come on, you can't come with a five zero score yeah. line and tell me not who had the safety. I actually tried to look up the game book for this, but it's so long ago I couldn't find don't it. Don't have so it. Someone out there go and find it for us. No but, bueno. Yeah, the Lions uh, you know, not only have they had the historic failures, they've had the blowing of two of the greatest players at their position in the history of the NFL, Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson. Uh, the the safety was some guy named Andre, A-N-D-R-I-E, who I've never heard of. Okay. And he he shared the sack of Landry with some guy named Pew. Okay. So. Shout out to them. But yeah, we, we talk about the Lions. I mean, I feel like when they really elevated themselves because the Barry Sanders years in the 90s they were like not very good but there was something to get excited about because you had Barry they made the playoffs a few times they just didn't win any games I feel like the Matt Millen era really did a number on this team in terms of fan perception across the NFL 
for those who weren't around or don't remember, Matt Millen was the GM uh, for a while, and he made a habit of drafting receivers in the first round basically every single year <laughs> over and over again. And he so kept being drafted, the GM. Uh, that's yeah, the part I don't understand. They drafted Roy Williams. Then the next year, they drafted Charles Rogers, second overall, who flamed out the league, never did anything. Yep. Then I think they took a year off. And then the next year, they came back and people were like, I wonder who the Lions are going to draft this year. And they drafted another wide receiver, Mike As Williams. Not that Mike Williams. Nope. Um, but I feel like that really elevated them to what you said at the top, Tim. The, 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 the anguish. Can you imagine being a Lions fan going, it's draft time. We've already got Joey Harrington, who's going to obviously lead us to the promised land. Obviously. And then you keep drafting wide receivers every single year. And everyone's like, why do you keep drafting wide receivers? But they did. And the Lions have sustained terribleness for a very long time. So the NFC's version of the Browns, I would say, is the Lions. The closest facsimile the NFC has. No one is the Browns. That's true. That's true. We're not going to do power rankings, but maybe we should think about it. But both If we did, be, the Browns would be at the top. Yeah. Both of these uh, franchises will be in the 2023 DFI. And we'll get to those... The rest Only two those. teams to ever go 0 and 16. Yeah, good fact. And both in the last 15 years, right? The Marinelli Brown, Marinelli Lions and the Hugh Jackson Browns. The last year, Matt Mar- Millen's tenure. Ah, finally, finally did a number on him. Eh? But we'll get to the rest of the DFI for 2023 momentarily. But we'll take a, a quick moment here, Tim. A quick a moment. Mm, yes. Breath. A quick oasis in the desert of terrible football to talk about teams that have left. The Ooh, DFI got better. To, let's offer some hope to the people out there who are fans of crappy teams who think they're never going to get better. You mentioned the Steelers, but obviously that was, you know, antiquity a while ago. by NFL standards. The um, Titans more recently got off the list, though. The Titans got off the list. I became a Titans fan, Tim, just a little personal history for the, fam- the fans out there. Uh, when I first got into football, it was just 2000. Uh, and the reason was I bought Madden 2001. It had Eddie George on the cover. I knew if you're going to pick football. how better chimes, it defaulted opportunity. To, yep. you know, back in those days, it defaulted to the guy on the cover. You had their team, you played with them. So that's how I picked the Titans for those wondering. The reason so sorry I about that, that is because obviously the year before they didn't win the Super Bowl, but you know, the half a yard out thing, which this podcast not named after, by the way, for anyone who's wondering why I'm inflicting on myself. Um, but then the Titans were pretty good the next couple of years, Steve McNair and Eddie George and Jeff Fisher when he was younger and the you know, team was solid. Then 2003 onwards really went into a pretty bad tailspin. And basically that continued until Mike Malarkey's tenure uh, about six or seven years, six years ago-ish, I think it was now, um, during which time the team didn't win a single playoff game, made the playoffs like once as the one seed, got beaten by Baltimore in the first round. It was just every year paying two and 14, hiring Ken Wisenhunt. There were a lot of problems <laughs> The Titans organization drafted Jake Locker, drafted Vince Young, and you just felt like it was never going to end. And Tim, you lived in Nashville for some of this period. So I did. Some, some some tales from tales from the war, so to speak. I um, do. I kept me. So I was I worked for a bank when I was in Nashville and we had a, a box at the stadium. And so I would occasionally get to go to the box. And the with Adelphia that came Coliseum, as it was then, Tim, is that right? It was the Adelphia Coliseum uh, and then LP Field and what Nissan, Nissan Stadium. Stadium. Now, but, um, yeah, sir. Of course, <laughs> uh, I at least pronounce Nissan properly. So the uh, one of the benefits of being a, a luxury box holder is that you get these events in the off season where you get to meet the coach and the players, and and you got to kind of have these opportunities to interface. And the number of new fresh faces who were going to be the quarterback of the future that I got to meet in the few years, uh, the Jake Locker year, that was a good year. Um, you know, I mean, was, was it, was it, <laughs> it was, you know, by the way, just a sidebar, do you know what Jake Locker's doing now? I worry working for his college. Probably. He, he is a pastor in rural Washington state. So that after he was retired, he never played for any other NFL team. He just retired. Anyway, sidebar. No, no, no shade to pastors. My mom's a pastor in rural Kentucky. So no, nothing. just to say that he, his yep, football not playing not football. No. So it was it was certainly an interesting time. Uh, I will tell you, I was at a game that uh, destroyed one of your very few stints not in the DFI as a franchise over the last however many years, and that was um, well, you had gone thirteen and three. You were in the playoffs. You were playing my Steelers, 
And there was the the whole matter of the wiping the shoes with the terrible towel. Yeah, Lendale White and Lendale Keith Bullock, White right? and Keith Bullock. Yeah, not a great idea. It didn't. Uh, of course, the curse now of the terrible towel stuck with you for about a decade uh, before you were allowed to be decent at football again. Yeah, but you can get out. I think you know Malarkey took over. The team went nine and seven. Mentioned take nine and seven if you can get it. Fans of crappy teams, I'm sure you will. You know, couple of stacked couple of seasons together. Won a playoff game in a weird that weird game against the Chiefs where Mario took great playoff. game. Um, and then you know you get back to the playoffs, and then we went. Me and you, in fact, went to Foxborough to watch us play the Patriots and get beat. And then hired Mike Vrabel, and it's been you know successes, largely speaking, successful tenure for him since then. Um, so it is possible. I think another couple of teams just to give mention to. I'd say Buffalo. Probably. I mean, Buffalo in the oh. 90s were amazing. Four Super Bowls in a row, but lost them all. Everyone knows that. But in the early 2000s, I mean, they were they were bad. I mean, after Drew Bledsoe kind of left them, they were in quarterback purgatory for a long time. Had guys like JP Lossman, under center. The team never really went anywhere. They had Marshall Lynch. You know, that was good. They had Fred Jackson. They had some good players. Lee Evans. There, were, there was this players. one quarterback in their division that kept winning it over and yeah. over and over and over. It didn't help. The AFC East was like the downtrodden swamp of the NFL for quite a long time while Brady was there, funnily enough. Um, but the Browns now cause celebrate in the NFL. The last the few Bills. years, a lot of success. Sorry, yeah, the Bills um, have had that success the last few years. So they have also got out of it, as have Cincinnati. Cincinnati were awful for a long, long time. Um, yeah, you were. know, again, some green shoots had the Carson Palmer, Chad Johnson, Slash Ocho Cinco, Hushman Zada period, where they were pretty good. Then Carson Palmer got his knee blown out. Then the team sucked again. Andy Dalton, a, the Andy Dalton era. They were fine. But I mean, before that, I feel like they were kind of a downtrodden team for a while. And they've managed to gradually build out of it in the 2000s, you know, mid 2000s onwards. Um, and they're now, you know, one of the favorites in the AFC every year. So I'd say they're another team that got out. Is there anyone else you think that's clambered out of the, uh, the Maya? Uh, not gotten all the way out. There are teams that have gotten close to getting out. And I think... Uh, as we transition sort of into who's still in, that's an interesting topic. And um, teams like the Jacksonville Jaguars, who will string together uh, a, a winning season. Uh, they had that run to the AFC Championship game, and you go, how, how can you keep a team in the downtrodden franchise index that was in the AFC Championship game? It's like, well, look what they did before and thereafter. You're not going to get out on one year. And you look at teams like, and people will say, this is blasphemy. They went to the Super Bowl, for Christ's sakes. But the Carolina Panthers have never had back-to-back winning seasons. So there are teams who have, who have had some success. They, they throw out a season there where you go, okay, they're going to be contenders. Um, and it, everybody thinks about the Kansas City Chiefs, right, who were trash, 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 and then Patrick Mahomes made them God again. And most teams go from trash, trash, to get good for a couple of years and then back to trash, then good for a couple of years, then back to trash. Yep. The best teams, when you get a guy like Tom Brady, a guy like Patrick Mahomes, a guy, you know, whatever – um, and then the most elite franchises, um, you can't keep down, so they tend to have more good years than bad years. But the downtrodden franchise is that more bad years than good years, right? You, you can't get off the yeah. schneid. And I think teams like the Jaguars, teams like the Panthers, teams like the Jets at times, um, mm. who have found themselves on and off over the last decade, two decades, um, you know, they'll have a Rex Ryan era where you're like, all right, this team's out, and then they'll go back to being two and fourteen again. So I don't know yeah. what you're. No, I think I think 100%. And I mean, you mentioned a couple of teams there. I think the, let's 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 kind of pick through these, right? So Ooh, we're okay. We're now going to assess the downtrodden franchise index for 2023. And I this is important, guys. This is like so, 80% of our in-season coverage. Uh, and we will be we will be tracking the progress of these teams throughout the season. Indeed, good and bad. And I say good and bad. It will be bad. All bad. So, yeah. The the Lions and the Browns locked and loaded. No further discussion needed. A team that you Agreed. mentioned, I have on the list. And I'll talk about them first. I was going to talk about them last, but you mentioned them, so I'll talk about them first. Is Jacksonville? Um, Jacksonville's a downtrodden franchise. They're favored Jackson- to win your division, Bucko. Yeah, they they won't. But that we can save that for another time. Uh, we'll do a preview podcast coming up next week. You can listen to that while I make erroneous claims about the Titans winning the AFC South. But we'll park those for the time being. The Jags. You mentioned the exact reason why. Everyone's like, "Oh, the Jags." You know, they've got. Trevor Lawrence, he's the sexy young QB. They've brought in Calvin Ridley, who everyone's you know salivating over down there in Duval. Doug Peterson's won a Super Duval. Bowl. Blah blah blah. Duval. Right? Yep. They are the off season darlings, really. I would say yep. this this off season is 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 the Jags. Um, Only because the Colts botched the Taylor thing, or it would have been there again. <laughs> 
That's true. But I think the Jags probably have got a claim to be the off-season hype team this year. Maybe the Lions have had some of that, but the Jags... Steelers are, are getting a little bit of it, but yes, I agree. But, but the Jags made the playoffs last year. You mentioned the last time they made the playoffs. It was 2017. That was the Blake Bortles, Leonard well, Fournette. prior to team. last year when they won your division. Yes, yeah, sorry. I meant the time before. So after they did that, everyone goes, oh, you made the AFC Championship game. They sh- really should have won that game against uh, New England. They didn't. because Shouldn't have won the one against us, just to be clear. Go ahead. But uh, the record they had after that yeah. for four years was the following. 5-11, and 6-10, and 1-15, yep. and 3-14. Mm-hmm. and yep. 14. They were last in the AFC South all four years. So they went to the AFC Championship game, and then they were the worst team in one of the worst divisions in football for four years in a row before they got good again. So, Well, notably, they were also the worst team in the worst division in football in 2016. So the aberration here was the <laughs> yeah. was the AFC Championship game here. They were sh- yeah. th- th- this is the five seasons prior to going to the AFC Championship right. game: two and fourteen, four and twelve, three and thirteen, five and eleven, three and thirteen. Right. It's but not a good exactly, team. But this is exactly the point we talked about: can you get out? It's you have to be sustained to get out. Jacksonville has had one good year, and there's a lot of buzz around the team. They're not out. They're not out. They now they have no. a path to get out of the yeah. franchise index. But here's what I'd say on the Jags type of historical, and I think you're in agreement with me, so we can move on from the Jags. Um, but four of the first five years this franchise existed, they made the playoffs. With this Mark Brunel, Tony Baselli, Jimmy Smith, Fred Taylor, you know, that year. They made the playoffs four of the first five years after the expansion, which is remarkable, right? If you think remarkable. about the Texans, when the, when the Texans are the most recent expansion team, they were awful. The, ru- like, the rules were easier for the, the Jags and the, sure, and the Panthers, but the yes. Panthers, yeah. But yeah. still, I mean, it, they did very well to get very good very fast. Yep. Um, so they made four of the first five years of their existence, they made the playoffs. And then they've made four total playoff appearances since then. So since 2000, they've only been in the playoffs four times. Yep. So if you're a Jags fan and you're like, oh, we're not downtrodden, we're on the... Listen, maybe you'll have a great year. You'll win the AFC South. You'll make the AFC, whatever, AFC Championship. What in the Super Bowl? But as of right now, 2023, I've got the Jags on the list, Tim, and you're in agreement, so we can move on. Who have you got on, on your DFI for 2023? Oh, I mean, one of my favorite DFI teams here recently... Uh, from the same division, and people are 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 going to be aghast at this because they go, they can't have been that bad. Let me tell you, they have been that bad, and that is the Indianapolis Colts. Who, if there was any doubt, and let me tell oh, you, you, there was the not. On. I've got the. Oh, I know where you were going. You thought I was going Texans. They're coming. Don't worry. But yeah. no, the Colts. The Colts are atrocious. They have been atrocious ever since the moment Andrew Luck said, "Nah." I don't want to play football anymore. They have won, uh, had, had two winning seasons. They have had shit the rest of the time. And let me tell you, don't be don't be tricked by this nine and eight season they had in twenty twenty one. The nine and eight yeah. season they had in twenty twenty one was against some of the worst competition in football. They were terrible. They played other terrible teams, and they won more games than they should have. They are a media darling every off season. You're not going to agree with me on this one as much as you're going to want to. This is my controversial pick to. of 2023's downtrodden franchise. I think the Colts may win, may win one game this year. They're terrible. They don't believe they 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 worst uh, biggest comeback against them in the history of football last year. Okay, yeah, this is no, that was that was funny, and they're all they're, they're certainly on the track. I have them, I had a, I had a watch list, Tim, which was outside looking in, if you will, on the DFI. I had the Colts on that list. No, and no. I, no. And I, the reason I did, I'll just put, say this quickly. I had, yeah. I put Colts brackets, hopefully. So so I hate the Colts. And they've I won too terrible. many games. Listen, they've but won they too many they've games. They've won too many games to be down. But I don't care. I don't care. They're downtrodden because they hired Jeff Saturday. They're downtrodden because their owner is a oh. piece of trash. They're downtrodden because their GM can't figure out how to get the best players in his team to show up. They're downtrodden because they went 4-12-1 last year, including an unbelievable streak of losses. I went and watched the Steelers beat the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis last year. One of the worst football games I've ever seen in my life. The Steelers were not a good football team last year, and they beat what was an even worse Indianapolis football team. The Colts, 4-12 and 1 last year, put them back in. Um, I, you know, I'm telling I you. I would say they tick a lot of the boxes, in. right? You've they're got in. Ma- you've got Maniac owner, right, yep. who does crazy, unpredictable shit all the time. The Jeff Saturday thing really put this team on the map for the downtrodden franchise index because he's up for those who didn't remember this exact plotting, he was a high school coach. Yep. That was it. That was his highest level of coaching achievement ever. Leader of men, playing, playing leader of Colts. men. I'm glad he's never been an NFL coach, said Jeff Saturday, because it means he's not scared. And then Jeff Saturday proceeded to win his first game in charge and then lost 
all of the others. So they're on the map. I didn't have them in the DFI for right now, but we can come back to that at the end if we hang on. Hang on. No, no. One more. Uh, one more reason that puts them in the back in the DFI. That nine and eight season, I think people tend to forget they were nine and six. Yeah. They were nine and six going to the last two weeks of the season. They had games against the Raiders at home, not exactly a juggernaut, and the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road, who yeah. were tr- terribly bad. No, they were awful. They were awful. And yeah. all they had to do was win one of those games. They did not. They lost to the Raiders 20-23, to 23, and then in what might be the most embarrassing football score line of all time, 11-26, to 11-26 to 26 against the Jacksonville Jaguars in a win-and-in game to go to the playoffs. It, this team absolutely qualifies for the DFI. It, it, it's, a, it's a no-brainer. Okay, so the Colts are being, are being put forth for candidacy, I'll put it that way, for the DFI for 20. All right. I'll round it out by saying the Texans, because they definitely are, which means great for the Titans, because it means all the other franchises are in the DFI except for us. But anyway, the Texans, I don't think there's, there's, there's no, there can be no doubt. There can There is no counter argument to the Houston Texans being in the DFI. Do you remember when they were good? I do. do. Bill O'Brien it, killed that team. Do you know, it seems such a long time ago doesn't it that the, it does. the texas were good now listen it was pre-covid so the world has changed a lot since then but they won four of five possible division titles 2015 to 2019 they won four divisions in five years and you think how the collapse has been so quick and i think this interesting point you make about the colts if you take them from the the carson Wentz meltdown against the jags to today the, you know not many worst teams in football the texans were very very good then they had the huge lead against the Chiefs, which they blew. Squandered. Okay, it's the Chiefs. It's Patrick Mahomes. You know, they're on their way to glory, etc. You can understand that. But really, since that happened, the team's been in a spiral. They've won 11 games total in the last three years under four different coaches, if you include Romeo Cronell, who was an interim after uh, Bill O'Brien got fired. They've done two. They've hired two one-and-done coaches who were hired clearly to be one-and-done coaches. Um <laughs> They've had the owner complain during the anthem protests. Oh, yeah, during the anthem protest that the it, we don't want to have the quote inmates, inmates running the running prison. The asylum. Unquote. Yeah, right. He's, now that owner has since passed away, but it was an astoundingly tone deaf and ill received quote by his own franchise, his uh-huh. own players, the rest of yeah. the NFL. They've hired Jack Easterby to be kind of the czar of football operation. Jack Easterby got his start basically as a sort of on site pastor for the new england patriots he then somehow got in the year of the owner started running things everyone was like who is this guy and why has he got a job high up in football operations he had a nebulous role and in houston and has eventually been let go um i will just say a couple of good things for the texans you know they were in a complete rebuild reboot whatever you want to call it right new quarterback they've hired D'Amico ryan's i do think that's a good hire i think that was a sensible hire which i think a lot of downtrodden teams don't make they try and swing for the fences right they try and get the next you know, sexy young thing. And I think D'Amico Ryan's good looking fellow though. He is, uh, is a solid, pragmatic, good head coach comes from a good system, knows the franchise. They got rid of Jack East to be new rookie quarterback. There might be cause for celebration or in the future for Houston, but it's certainly going to not going to be this year. So I've Houston in the DFI locked and loaded AFC South represent. Yeah. I obviously can't disagree with you there. I do want to add a little bit of color. You talked about, they won four, division titles in five years. Um, They are the only team, I think, in the history of football who can say they did so. uh, While two of those four division title winning seasons, they scored fewer points than they allowed. They had a negative seven point differential in 2019. They had a negative 49 point differential in 2016 (laughs) while winning the division. Even I better. So bad. I can tell Ac- you, I was watching all the games. Awful. Awful. Ac- across the four division winning seasons. So leave out the one in the middle where they were abhorrently terrible. But across the four division winning seasons, they outscored their opponents a total of 56 points over 64 games. So wow. 0.8 points more than their opponents over that time. Four division championships. Tells you how bad the AFC South was. If you Correct. include the season in the middle, the sandwich season, they outscored their opponents by negative negative 43 points, negative 43 points relative to their opponents over a series of seasons in which they won the division four times. That my friends is a downtrodden franchise. Even when you're good, you're bad. Okay. It's bad. (laughs) 
Yeah. Texans suck. Can't you're on the list. That. Still on the list. Never been off the okay. list. Go ahead. You're you're up, Tim. You're you're taking the next one. Who you got? Well, I mean, listen. Uh, I I went a little bit rogue uh, on the last one, so I will bring it back to a little bit more obvious, a little more chalk if I can. And I think one of the chalkiest of DFI teams that's still a little fun to watch sometimes is the Washington Commanders of the NFC East. The only NFC East team we can put in the DFI these days used to have a couple of of, of, uh, participants um, but no, the Washington commanders, obviously new owner this year. Maybe that's yep. the, the ticket can't quite figure the quarterback thing out. Kirk cousins took him for a fortune and then left, um, you know, they've RG they three RG three and then they blew out his knee, Jason you know, Campbell. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure why we're talking about him, but Patrick Ramsey, Tim, shows <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, of, there's, a lot there's a lot of names. There's a lot of names there, but no, they've, they've even when you thought there. they had it, they didn't have it. And they've had some running backs. You're like, ooh, he's fun. You got scary Terry McLaurin. You go, ooh, he's fun. But they not enough to get out. 8-8-1 last year in a really tough division. I think this is a team who could get out. They've got an opportunity to get out. Still in as far as I'm concerned. You got to like not lose your division eventually if you want to move yourself out of the DFI. Um, hopefully for Washington fans, whatever we call your football team for the next couple of years, uh, the new ownership brings a new culture, brings an opportunity to get better. My my favorite Washington Commanders moment of all time. It didn't even happen on the football field. It was after uh, Albert Hainsworth had blown his way out of Tennessee, getting a hundred million dollars of Dan Snyder's money uh, to effectively be a terrible football player was one of my really the creme de la creme. They got that reputation for a while. They were paying. Uh, oh, guys, yeah. just obscene contracts that no one else would even consider because if they didn't, no one was coming to play for the, com- well, at the time, a different team name. Yeah. I, you know, it's... Well, uh, Tim, Tim, on that note, here's a list of players who have pl- who played for the Washington football team of various sorts, right? Of various the, the, the major tutties, if you will. Yes, the, ma- the major tutties, the Dan Snyders as they were. Obviously, you mentioned Hainsworth. Uh, Adam Archuleta, that was oh, yeah. a horrific contract. Bruce Bad Smith. One. Post Bills played for this team. I didn't even Deion know that. Sanders played for this team. Jason really? Taylor played oh, for this I knew team. That one. I knew Jason Taylor. Josh Norman played yep. for this team. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, Dan Snyder on his own, this team could have been in the playoffs every year. You're still downtrodden as long as you're owned by such a horrible cretin. Um, yep. mm-hmm. They've only won, they only won two playoff games in his entire tenure, which yep. started in 1999. So the team is not good. awful. The stadium's falling apart. The team has been generally terrible. Obviously, the my, my favorite is like the, the pipe the breaking stuff. and just pouring dirty water yeah. on the fans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- but I think the free agent big swings and misses on big names was a huge part of this issue sure. for them. And for there's sure. just one quick quick story I'll just tell, and then I'll, I'll ask you another quiz question. We can move on. Oh god. Um, the so they signed. Uh, do you remember Jeremiah Trotter, uh, middle oh, yeah. linebacker for the Eagles? Oh, yeah. So he moved over to play for Washington, and he okay. was a big free agent signing. Yeah. And here's a quote. This is from an athletic. Uh, piece the athletic website it's google the all dan snyder team and oh they've listed the worst players per position and given a little summary and it's it's exceptionally funny reading so i encourage everyone to go read that um here's the summary on jeremiah trotter right okay trotter signed a seven-year contract after consecutive pro bowl selections with philadelphia but lasted for only two uneventful seasons he then re-signed with the Eagles and went back to two Pro Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> now that just sums up the Dan the Dan Snyder free agency era to a T. And I'll ask you a quick quiz question before you I'm going to I'm going to get it wrong, but go ahead. I'm enjoying these. Uh, sorry, I'm enjoying. Um, this is not. I, I'm not the Browns much, guy, you know. No. So the last time they won a playoff game was in 2005. Yeah. Uh, it was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay. Can you name either of the starting quarterbacks in that game? 2005 and they yep. won a playoff game well yep. the against who tampa well the the command well the washington quarterback would have had to have been brunel mark brunel it was mark mark brunel who threw for 41 yards and an interception in this game i mean he won. was clearly the star of the he game was the engine yeah starting so you're, for tampa bay starting for tampa I, 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 um was it one? I mean, I don't like McCown. No, it's Chris right. Sims. It was what? Chris Sims. Yeah. Right. How's that for a block before he ruptured his spleen and his career ended? I had but, no uh, idea. Yeah. It was uh, a strange QB matchup the last time. That just tells you how long ago it was. So 
Okay, I'm up next. I, I only have two more teams, Tim, on my DFI, so this will be interesting. We're getting into crunch time now. I'm going to leave for the one. Well, that you I didn't have the have. Colts, which is ridiculous. Yeah, but I've got two left. So I'm going to say now the team that I think has the least hope of any team in the entire league by a very long way, which is the Arizona Cardinals. Um, if they're not picking first overall next year, it will be, in my mind, one of the upsets of the century. I'll just take you back to last off season, Tim. March the 2nd, 2022, mm-hmm. they, mm-hmm. Hi- they hand huge extensions to head coach Cliff Kingsbury and oh, yep. general manager Steve Kime. Yep. Mm-hmm. Also the, the homework contract. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. July the 21st, exactly. They hand the massive extension to Kyler Murray prematurely in most people's estimations. Since that time, they fired the head coach and the GM and Kyler Murray tore his ACL. So that really <laughs> is pretty much as hopeless a situation as you can find yourself in it, is it, as possible in the NFL. I'm sure you've seen the memes, Luke, that here's how it started and how it's going. Yes. Like that, number one, that would be a good one. But even the how it was started, I'm not sure is what they yeah, meant, what they thought it looked like. like yeah. to, to bring it up to, you know, topical meme, you know, the Barbie and Oppenheimer things. I feel like the how it started is Barbie and how it's going is Oppenheimer. There you go. Love that. Um, I've got, I think, I, I, listen, I've wheeled out a lot of odd factoids in this in this podcast, but I'm going to I'm gonna do one more for you, Tim. And I think this is my favorite. Can't wait. Down Cannot stat wait. I've, I've ever come across. So yep. interesting thing about the Cardinals you know, they moved to Arizona in the late 80s, 1988. They moved to Phoenix. They were the Phoenix Cardinals, now the Arizona Cardinals. Before that, they were in St. Louis. In that time period, the only real success that they have had has come with veteran quarterbacks they've signed from other teams, right? You think Carson Palmer, you think Kurt Warner, right? Those were the really successful years for the for the Cardinals. Yep. Since then, they've drafted 15 quarterbacks in that entire time period. I'm not going to ask you to name them all. Don't worry. Most of these guys you've never heard of. Nope. Um, but they have in that time draft, Tim, I'm going to ask you this question. Have, they've oh, drafted God. one all pro in that time. So of the 15 they've drafted since 1988, they've drafted one all pro. Any guess at who that might be? All pro quarterback? Yeah. I'll jump in because you're not going to get it, but it was the first. No. So the first oh. You're not going to get it. I don't know. The, oh. the first quarterback they ever drafted was in 1988. So this is just after they've moved and they draft a quarterback who goes on to be a first team all pro. However, obviously not for them. N- not only not for them, he was a first team all pro for the Jets in 1999 and the reason he was a first team all pro is because he is Tom Tooper who changed to being a punter. <laughs> so the only first team all pro quarterback that the Cardinals have drafted since they moved to Arizona, became a punter. An all-pro punter. And then became an all-pro punter. That's the only one that they've drafted, yeah. Wow. And I have nothing to yeah. add. The Cardinals are terrible. Yeah. They've been terrible since they lost the Super Bowl to the Steelers. They were terrible before that. Um, that you know, you talk about... Go ahead, sorry. They, no, I was just going to say, I just think the, the killer for them... You, I have no idea how when this is even going to end. Like... I think they're a fixture in the DFI for at least the next three or four years. Well, um, their contract situation makes that. And they and they have started jettisoning talent to try to fix the salary cap issues. And they did the sticking plaster of we'll bring in the old veterans. You know, they tried mm. DeAndre Hopkins. They brought in J.J. Watt. They added A.J. Brown. Now they're having a kind of fire sale. The Kyler Murray contract's a complete millstone. Oh, new coach, yeah. new GM. No, they were the it's, sexy it's pick a couple off seasons ago. You know, yeah. everybody thought that was they were going to get it sorted. Hopkins was going because he wanted to play for one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I, I don't know who he thought was going to go with him because it Ryan, certainly Ryan wasn't Tannehill. there. He just was a little bit late to that. Ooh, ooh, but yeah, ooh. so the Cardinals, I have firmly in Scots the DFI. I'm assuming you agree. And yeah, it's over to you. Agreed. Uh, I'm going to go with the team. I assume you have this team. Um, ever since, in my estimation, though, they did make the playoffs the following year because the NFC is just trash. Um Ever since they lost the Super Bowl in a Super Bowl, they had no business losing, gifting Tom Brady yet another uh, after winning, leading 28 to three in the third quarter, needing nothing more than to not just absolutely crap the bed. The Atlanta Falcons have since had one winning season, had lots of mediocre seasons. You say, Tim, mediocre is not bad enough to get in the DFI. Well, let me tell you, they went seven and 10 two years ago with a minus 146 point differential they have not outscored their opponents in the last six years they have not had a functioning offense since the super bowl season really they haven't scored i mean they just score no points um and when they do it's in garbage time they hung on to matt ryan too long 
Um, they switched out of Matt Ryan to Marcus Mariota. And listen, I love Marcus Mariota. I think he's spectacular as a human being. He is not spectacular, apparently, as an NFL quarterback. And you hamstrung the guy by having your best receiver on the team, in my estimation, Kyle Pitts, not featured at all in the passing game. You've got excellent players. And then they do things, listen, maybe, maybe, maybe this running back that they took this year it bright um oh my god what's his name you know Bijan Robinson Bijan that's the one the one that everybody's talking about is going to be the next coming of Jesus Christ and he better be because the last thing this team appeared to need last year was a running back and yeah. they wasted wasted the the a top 10 pick on a position that is certainly not getting many teams to use premium assets for uh very all all very drought downtrodden things yeah. Um, Let me ask you a question, Tim, if I may, just because I think you hit on an interesting point that maybe we haven't talked about so far and we can we can quickly touch on it. So I didn't have the Falcons on my list. Ooh. I had the Falcons on my watch list as okay. potential. Now right. I'm I'm meaner mind, than you are. So yeah, that's that's true. But I would say at what point in your estimation do you cross over from just being bad to being downtrodden? Like what's what's your differentiator? Because we've spoken about some of the criteria, the terrible the decision ter- making, the terribleness, but th- I don't feel like the Falcons have had that signature. Like that was really fun. I guess the 28, three was the funny thing, right? That was the hilarious moment. But since then, I feel like they've just kind of been rolling along like unre- more unremarkable than downtrodden. But I guess if you, if you have that as your, your, your lodestone for your downtrodden status, it's hard to pick a better one. All right, here, here, let me try this. The, Pro Football Reference has a statistic called approximate value where you rank every player on the team what they're worth to the team. Yeah. The best player in approximate value on their team last year. Any idea? Tyler Algier? Marcus Mariota. That was the best they had. Their leading receiver the last four years. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts, Drake, Drake London. London. Yeah. The last four years leading run, we'll go about five years leading running back, Coleman, Trevin Coleman, Devontae Freeman. Do you remember this one? Todd Gurley. Yeah. Todd Gurley. Patrick, Cordell, pa- Cordell or Patterson out of nowhere, not even a running back. Tyler Algier finally puts together a thousand yard season. When you start going back and you can go the last five years and you don't have a single repeat on your list of mm. leading rushers, leading receivers. The only reason they had leading passer multiple years in a row is because they refused to move on from Matt Ryan when he was well past his prime. It, their drafting has been questionable. When they find talent, they seem to forget about it. Uh, I bet you anything Drake London is not their leading receiver this year. Tyler Algier certainly won't be their leading rusher because they've got to give the ball to Bijan. It's mm. it's about the way they've built the team. It's about the way they've handled coaches. It's about the way they've, uh, you know, faltered since the Super Bowl to me again because we talked about it it's not just wins and losses no it's, it's those not. other things they haven't lost that many games I mean you, you apparently you They've play in this mid, division you have middling, seven right? and ten seven and ten seven and nine seven and nine four and twelve so you know last five years haven't been atrocious they haven't been one of the worst teams in football by record but they absolutely have when it comes to doing the things you do to win the football games um and that's where I think you know, not using Kyle Pitts effectively, whatever they thought they were doing, bringing in Gurley for a year, the inability to generate a running game, and then when they do using their top pick on a running back, those types of things are what put them in the DFI for me. Okay, interesting. NFC South getting a getting a roasting here. The South divisions on the whole not the best. Not right good. Now in the NFL. Not good. I will. I will. This is my last DFI team. So I only had seven. We'll do a re, we'll do a recap at the end for those who haven't been following along. So hope I'm you're fine. taking notes. I, I've just started. The, the, <laughs> the last team, I think, is arguably the third de- most downtrodden franchise in the history of the NFL. Who we're not, and Now, we're not drafting these in order. There's not a rankings. We're just doing it by the seat of our pants. I think after the Browns and the Lions, I think the New York Jets are the third most downtrodden franchise in, in the NFL. Everyone knows about Joe Namath and the guarantee and you know very famous, great, all the rest of it. Fantastic great piece of NFL law. Apart from that, Tim, it's not really been very good for New York nope. Jets football. You've seen the Giants win a couple Super Bowls, then be crap for a while, and then win a couple more Super Bowls. You've seen 
superstars come and go like the wind. I mean, we spoke about Washington having this rich history of terrible free agent signings. I mean, the Jets were like, if there was an old free agent who got a big contract, it was either Washington or the Jets or possibly the Raiders for about 15 years, it felt like. Have never been able to find the guy under center. Joe Namath is still the uh, single season passing record holder for the Jets, even though he retired like 50 years ago, which is not great because the NFL has moved on quite a lot since then, for those that don't keep track. Um, They had an 11 year stretch without winning, without making the playoffs in 1970 to 1980. So there weren't even as many teams back then. I didn't make the playoffs for 11 years in a row. But don't worry, Tim, because they've now eclipsed that mark. Last year was their 12th consecutive non-playoff season. Their last playoff appearance was in 2010. That was a long time ago. They went 10 and 6 in 2015. Didn't make the playoffs because you're a downtrodden franchise, and that's what happens. Since 2010, Tim, their overall record Mm. is 70 and 124. It's bad. It's, it's, it's bad. It's him. I'm going to go one beyond that, and I'm going to use a, a, a technical term. It. It's fucking bad. Is what it is. Yes. It's fucking bad. Yes. Um, and it just is set up. And I, I don't say this with any great joy because I really don't have anything against the Jets. Isn't this just set up for them to botch this? They brought in Aaron Rodgers. The great hope. The defense has been great. They offensive the rookie of the year. Defensive rookie of the year. They somehow they've t- the coach seems like the right guy. You've added a four-time MVP quarterback, but I would just we're gonna say, act. We're gonna act like Rodgers was a good fit in the, for this team. Are we gonna act like well, that? Let, Are well, we really? I was gonna say even if you want to take it back, not even that long ago, two thousand eight, Tim, two thousand eight, yeah. they brought in a superstar, Super Bowl winning quarterback from the Green Bay Packers who would go mm-hmm. to the Hall of Fame. His name was mm-hmm. Brett Favre. They went nine and seven, missed the playoffs. He left. And then they immediately drafted Mark Sanchez and went to two FC Championship games with Matt with uh, Rex Ryan. They said Matt Ryan. I, don't think I will. So. I will bet a thousand dollars. Aaron Rodgers does not have a uh, inappropriate photograph scandal. Okay. Yes. Well, one would hope, but I, Aaron no, Rodgers no is not chance. exactly a stranger to odd NFL no, stories. But, but not that one. Being, I just, I just feel like they're primed for just more fan pain for this team. And you've given Aaron Rodgers all this money. You've brought in a bunch of his friends to come and play for you, basically, like Randall Cobb. You brought in Alan Lazard. Like, but he took a $50 billion pay cut or something. He's he's yeah. a, he's on. And I just... He's bought in, maybe. They're set up. I think, I think the Jets have been through, as a fan base, have been through as much pain as any fan base, not named the Cleveland Browns or the Detroit Lions. Um, and maybe more. Well maybe more than forward, the Lions. Yeah, yeah, no, it's... it's, it's, it, the, it's the, the difference is they expect to be good. You know, you got this big media market, right? I think Jets fans don't realize their team is bad. Um, and listen, I'll be uh, in the building yeah. for opening night in MetLife, watching oh, uh, on nine eleven. I'll be I'll be watching the Bills and the Jets uh, going wow. at it. So I will report on downtrodden and franchise index game numero uno because that one's definitely in. The Jets are in. I'm sold a hundred percent. That I mean, they, they've been last in their division six of the last seven years. Squeaked out a third. <laughs> Um, in the other year, the coaching hires pre Sala were, oh, uh, I mean, Adam, oh, Adam Gase. Gase. Oh, 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 what were they Top thinking? Balls. Yeah, I mean, just an absolute disaster. When can't get a GM that makes any sense, can't they just don't know what they're doing? Um, the best thing they had going was Rex Ryan, he had one bad season, they shit canned him, you know. Yeah. And they got I, another team know. in this in this list that's had Bill Belichick as the head coach, will be it for about 10 minutes. I, I resign as the, as the HC of the NYJ. Of the NYJ. <laughs> Maybe it's just the Belichick facts. But that, Tim, that was the end. That of does make list, you so. more downtrodden, by the way, when someone resigns oh, on a napkin yeah. on their way up to the podium to take another job after not actually having coached for you. Um, Pretty spectacular. But yeah, that was the end of my list. So do you have anyone else? I have a couple of watch teams uh, on the back. We've covered a couple of them, but I'll let you take the floor. Well, it sounds like I have a, a longer list than you. And because of that, I have one other team that I had uh, on the in list. And then I've, I've got one that I'll, and that was the saints. So I had the saints is Ooh. in um, ever since, obviously officially drew Brees left, but even the last couple of drew Brees years were uh, of questionable value. Um, you know, they, they were that they were winning a lot of games and that's the reason I think they're probably out on most people's list. The last two years have been pretty bad. Um, for the Saints, they've won 
a couple more games than you might expect because the division has been so bad. Um, but yeah, you know, post breeze, no playoff appearance, maybe not long enough for you. But I don't you go think back been there long enough. That yeah, would be you, my counterpoint. Yeah, but you you go back to you had Bounty Gate, you had the Sean Payton deal, you had Sean Payton being tampered with, you had all of this. Like there's there's storyline stuff there. So all right, we I will acquiesce on the Saints. I'm not giving up yet on the Colts, um, but I will acquiesce on the Saints and say they cannot be in. There is a okay. team I have. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say the NFC South, you know, already has the Falcons in there. So yep. they are represented. I, I would say the Saints don't qualify just on the tenure. They don't have the tenure. But give it, you know, give Ooh. it a couple, give it a year. Or th- they got Derek Carr in, you know, we'll see. Maybe they end up being good this year. But I, I don't have the Saints on the list for this year. I don't think they're bad enough. All right. The Falcons, next, I'll give you. I think they'll, they'll be in I, next I, year. I missed on them. I missed All on right. the Falcons, but that's a fair point. And you have another team as well. I, no, no, no. This team is not in. This team is okay. not in. So just, just before we get onto the teams that not in on the fringe. All so right. I've got, and we can just do this as an official right. <clears throat> statement. The downtrodden franchise index for 2023: Cleveland Browns, Detroit yep. Lions, uh-huh. Arizona Cardinals, Agreed. New York Jets, yes, Houston Texans, yes, Washington Commanders, Jacksonville Jaguars, 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 Atlanta Falcons, and the Indianapolis Colts. As I, long I, as yeah. I, Listen, You're gonna let me put I, the Colts it, in? I'll, I'll I'll let you do it. I'm I'm taking the Saints away from you. I'll give you the Colts. Also, I hate the Colts, so I have no reason to defend them. But that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teams. So almost a third of the league is qualifying for the DFI this year. And on the watch list, Tim, there are a couple of others who I had circled as potential entrants, but I don't, for one reason or other, quite have them in there yet. I'll let you go first because you mentioned you had a team on the fringes. Um, as we wrap this thing up with a couple of teams to watch that may be very crap very soon. I think this team has as, almost as good an argument as the Colts. I didn't put them on the list because I didn't think you'd let me. Um, but this team has been fourth out of four in their division the last three consecutive years. They have not won more than seven games since 2016. Over that time, they've been through four coaches. Uh, one was one and done. Um, this is a team that absolutely shelled out a fortune for a savior quarterback because it was the only thing they needed to win a Super Bowl, then won the Super Bowl, and then tried to do it again six years yeah. later in my favorite player in the NFL, Russell Wilson. The Denver Broncos, if they're not downtrodden, my friend, they are mighty, mighty Ooh, close. No, they are treading that that thin line the razor's edge between genius and insanity i i didn't have them on my list actually but they are now you mention it certainly near and the contract situation of russell wilson we mentioned it with arizona if he sucks again yeah baby. they're in a they're in a world of pain they're in a, a a world of pain because that offense last year was abysmal you're right they've kind of gone under the radar as being crap because yeah. the AFC bad, South has got so much, everyone kind of puts it down to the AFC South. AFC West is so glitz and glam. You know, got Charles and the Chiefs. The Raiders have had a couple of good years, but yeah, the Broncos have been consistently very bad. Their record against the Chiefs is absolutely atrocious as well. I mean, I know the Chiefs are the class of that division and have been for the last several years. I think they haven't beaten the Chiefs since like 2015 or something, and they play them twice a year. is is bad up there in the Mile High City. Um, post Manning, so I, I I think they're on the fringe. I didn't have them in. I'll give you a watch list number for me and another team that i think has gone under the radar for being terrible okay. which is chicago which is chicago chicago now, chicago got a lot of positive pub last year because of the just justin fields doing some spectacular stuff on the field he was Didn't win any games up, <laughs> yeah it's pretty up and down um it wasn't like they were running teams off the field they lost they found a lot of different ways to lose they went to the super bowl obviously with rex grossman back in 2013 with rex that, as our quarterback we're yeah, thirteen and, and three with Rex Lovey Smith as our is, the, is the HC lost to Peyton Manning in the the very wet Super Bowl back in uh, yeah oh eight or so seven oh eight. Since then, Tim, this has not been a good team really at all. They've cycled through quarterbacks. They haven't had a good quarterback like ever. Like they they probably have as bad a record of quarterback play as any franchise in the entire NFL. And it doesn't alone make you a downtrodden franchise, but it certainly doesn't help. 
when you are churning through them at such a rate. Remember Cade McNown was drafted in the late 90s and to be, you know, oh, yeah. the late the latest savior. They had Jay Cutler. He was fairly good statistically for some years. Um, Justin Fields is now, you know, the they great started for Cordell the franchise. Stewart one year. Cordell Stewart. I got I did an immaculate grid the other day and Cordell Stewart for the Bears was one of my picks. I was very proud of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I'm just going to quickly pull up their seasons for the last, every, just because I feel like, because they're a historic franchise with a lot of like, you know, oomph to them, they're playing in Chicago, the only team in Chicago, it's big media market. Everyone remembers a lot of these historic teams and players that they've had over their illustrious history. Um, here are their records in the last several years. This is the last four years. I've got eight and eight, eight and eight, six and 11, three and 14. So trending in the wrong direction. Uh, now, the year before that, they went 12-4, and four, and that was the double doink game. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that was hilarious and also very painful because they really should have won that game, and they didn't. But before that 12-4 and four season where they got eliminated by the Eagles, their records were 5-11, and 3-13, and 6-10, and 5-11, and 8-8. Eight and eight. And then before that, they went 10-6. and six, They were good for a few years. So I have the Bears on the watch list. I, I hope they don't descend into the ranks of the dfi but i feel like they're they're mighty close because basically the justin fields experiment fails and they're on to maybe another quarterback or another coach this is not a team that's shown a lot of ability to rebuild quickly so i had the bears on on the watch list as well yeah here's what i'll tell you i think the bears i can see where you're coming from they've only finished bottom of their division once in the last five years yeah, that's true. Uh, they've been to the playoffs twice in the last five years, and they haven't lost anybody meaningfully. It's not like they – I was putting the Saints in. They were in the Super playoffs three years ago and, and damn near the Super Bowl, um, and I, I understand that. Uh, but they also lost Drew Brees, right? So for me, it's easier to get back in if you're a team that has had historical – and yeah, got true. good for a little while and you lose the thing that made you good. Easier to get back in. The Bears were were good – they had a rough spell in the po- sort of the end of the Cutler era, right when they were you know, the John was it was it John Fox um, yeah. was the coach there, so that was a bit of a challenge. Um, Trubisky clearly didn't work out. They're on to the field. Nagy era wasn't particularly good no. in the main, well, but I think moments, you've but. got you've got a good coach there, or at least a stable coach there. I think Fields is going to be good. They need more players. Um, they had. Uh, they made the big trade to get all the picks. Yeah, I mean, they had the DJ first Moore, pick, right? right? They had so. the first pick. They traded it to Carolina to go get some playmakers, uh, the type of thing that can help your franchise. So I, I certainly don't think they're in yet. I don't um, have them in, to be clear. Yeah, and I, if this year goes poorly, maybe they go back that way. I will, I will be rooting for the blue and orange to not fall in that particular bucket i don't think they're going that way but they could okay. if it goes badly they're they're certainly on the edge do you have anybody else as a team to watch uh let's see do i have anybody else we didn't exactly go in any order here um right. so i have i have one more which i had circled in a big way there's one team that we haven't mentioned really who you were angling to be in the dfi forever last year which was carolina yeah so well, carolina is absolutely you- a dfi team that you i i didn't even bring them up today because you wouldn't let me put them in last year and they went seven and ten so i couldn't figure I that give you the in. carolina panthers over the colts for sure what oh the carolina panthers don't have nearly as much fun off the field stuff uh the panthers well, have been bad for a jerry, while they've never had the, my go jerry richardson saga yeah. was not yeah. I mean, not funny but i mean no, no. talk about turmoil that Fair. was pretty pretty bad they had the Riverboat Ron era that was fun. That wasn't all that long ago. They Cam Newton. I mean, if you're if you're gonna put them in, you're gonna say number one, they've literally never had back to back winning seasons, which is hilarious for a team that went to the playoffs three seasons in a row. Yeah, um, it, they and have played in two Super Bowls. Yeah, I mean, they are um, a a seesaw of an organization. The last four years, five years. Uh, they have not won more than seven games. That certainly helps. They traded away their best player last year and somehow got better. Um, their top passers for the last five years go Cam Newton. Oh, I'd, I'd love to try some of these. Hang on. You, oh, go I ahead. All right. Yeah. Just, okay. Top five, top oh, five, God. the pass, the top passer for in yards for the Carolina Panthers the last five years go. <laughs> I gave you one. Do you know what? This is actually really hard because even last year they cycled through so many different guys. Uh-huh. I who's gonna? 
I will go. Their top passer last, last year had thirteen hundred yards. Was it was it PJ Walker? It was not. Was it Baker Mayfield? It was. Okay, Baker Mayfield. I got one. Year before. Mm. Two years ago. This is re- this is really difficult. Actually, twenty five hundred total yards. No, you have to give it to me. I'm seeing ghosts. Sam Darnold. Oh, Sam Darnold the year before. I forgot uh-huh. he was there the year before. Oh, my yeah, God. that was when they made the trade and did the option. Okay. Give me the uh, others just in the interest of time. Yeah, so Cam Newton, 2018, 2019, Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen. 2020, oh, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, oh, 2021, I Sam Darnold. <laughs> 2022, okay. Baker no. Mayfield. The, no, that's it. We're closing the arc. Carolina. <laughs> They're in? in? <laughs> Carolina's yes. in. They're I've been in. trying to put him in for nine months. I didn't no, even try in. today. That, oh, list, that makes that me so makes happy. You, makes me feel. That's going to make all of my friends in Raleigh very angry with me, and I apologize. Okay, so but they've Carolina's, been. Yeah. So we they're not on a watch list team. They're an in team. We'll do another recap in a sec because now we've added one more team. But you know, it's the DFI. We should have said this at the top. This is there's no method to this. There's zero. Completely it's subjective. You don't like it's our not, list? Start your own podcast. It's not an algorithm. It just this is what actually. We feel. Carol, if you don't like Carolina's our list, get on the socials and and flame us so get that we attract some attention, so, and then so, go start your own podcast. So I, I've got one more team, Tim, and we'll close it out with this. Who? I have them circled in a huge way as always. Raiders. A hu- No, 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 no. Who? Not the Raiders. But that's a good call. Hugely at risk, and and soon, Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Well, they won the Super Bowl. After they won the Super Bowl, the last They were time, shit before, and they've been shit since, yeah. 2002, they won the Super Bowl. There's Brad Johnson as the QB, and John Gruden as the coach, and the illustrious yeah, yeah, defense yeah, yeah. with all the great Hall of Fame players. They didn't, win a playoff, they didn't win a playoff game for 17 years. Yep. Mm-hmm. Until they won the, they Super, won the Bowl Super Bowl again. again. Yeah, <laughs> with Tom right. Brady. Yep. Tom Brady is now gone. Bruce Arians is now in some Yeah, this is on the Saints. Ball. This is on the same this, wavelength this as the team, Saints. This team is... I reckon it very like very fast. I reckon like end of this season, early next season, we could be saying DFI team. I know. Listen, you won the Super Bowl, so it does it gets you out of the out of jail for some time. But I have them quadruple underlined risk team because they are at a, they're in a huge danger of going back to being awful very fast. Because a team that was constructed for an old quarterback with a lot of older players, you think about yeah. the star players on this yeah. team. Mm-hmm. You talk about Levante David. You talk about Mike Evans. You know, these aren't young players. <clears throat> and the, the days of signing guys on veteran minimum contracts because they want to play with Tom Brady is gone. And they're not coming back. So I think nope. this team is going to be bad fast if they don't get their act together. So I have the, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just for the record, as much as you crapped on my Saints pick, this is the same theory as the Saints, except I don't actually have any of the bad play yet. It so, hasn't happened yet. But I yeah. have them as the, yeah, th- this could be a Texans-esque, you know, oh, we dominated and then suddenly we are up. Because to be clear, you just picked a team that won their division the last two years in the Super Bowl the year before that. Just throw that out there. there. Uh, there's one critical difference, Tim. His name Tom is Brady? Thomas Edward Brady. Yeah, Tom Brady. So, yes. How I, many How many Tom Brady bets have I won on you, by the way? I feel like it's a lot. Uh, yeah, more than I'd care to admit. But yeah, in that case, Tim, let's wrap it up for today. This is a slightly longer pod, but this is a topic we enjoy discussing. And you if you don't love this pod, time. don't come back because we. Yeah. This is us. This is this, this is the half yard line. The downtrodden franchise index for 2023 has been finalized. It is ten teams of infamy in the National Football League. One more time for the people in the back. Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, Arizona Cardinals, New York Jets, Houston Texans, Washington Commanders, Jacksonville Jaguars, Indianapolis Colts, Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers. They are in. That's the DFI for this year. Join us throughout the regular season to cover the DFI in all of its in glory. Um, As the season progresses, we'll be covering the downtrodden bowls where crappy teams play each other. When games become irrelevant because seasons are over and guys are just playing to keep jobs in the NFL, that is some of the most entertaining football at times because it's almost like preseason games, but with much better players. So you end up with a lot more carnage, almost like college football. Um, so enjoy those. But we'll be with you throughout the season next week on the Half Yard Line. You can join us for a preview of the 2023 football season. We'll no doubt talk about some of these teams, but we'll probably gloss over a lot of them because frankly, they're not going to do anything. And in the meantime, before you tune into that, find us on the socials at Half Yard Line Pod. Email us halfyardlinepod at gmail.com. Tim, anything you want to say for the fans who have just been crapped on for an hour and change? Listen, if you heard your team mentioned today, I have two 
words of consolation for you. One is we're going to talk about you all season. So the teams in the DFI don't get the t- the publicity. They don't get the coverage on ESPN, on, on Fox Sports, whatever your TV channel of choice is. You listen to Sirius XM Radio, whatever it is. They're not going to talk about your team because your team's terrible. Don't worry. We're going to talk about your team because we enjoy that. We also talk about the good teams, but not as much as we talk about the bad teams because it's fun because you do fun stuff. Our favorite team last year was the Detroit Lions. They were terrible, but they scored a bunch of points, and it was so fun to watch. Love a good GFI team. So that's that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, you know, hey, if you're mad at me, hit me up. Go on socials, blow us up, talk about how stupid we are, how great your team's going to be. We happily take that bet. So, uh, no, that's it for me. See you guys next week. Until then, be good. Godspeed.